going on. I'm not hungry. I am wanting to use that food as a way of dissipating those feelings because those feelings are difficult to deal with and I want to make the feelings go away with food and eating. And that's what people do a lot of. Now, you see all kinds of people at your institute and in these workshops that you do, I'm sure. Do most of these people come from childhoods that were overweight, or is this something that for a lot of people just starts at a certain time in their lives? And a variety of different situations. I see people who have been thin up until adulthood. Often I see a lot of women who were thin up until they had their first child, and then they've had obesity, obesity problems since then. Huh. And also another thing, too, is there's a lot of people out there that I call thin, fat people. Yes. <laughs> okay, who, who have this fat personality, or who abuse food in the same way, but for a variety of reasons, the kind of exercise or their personal metabolism, haven't uh, shown the body mm -hmm. that we attribute to the person who abuses food. Now, how do you deal with them, then? The same treatment would, would hold true for them? It has to do with awareness, and it has to do with a holistic approach to looking at what's going on in their life. And that relates to um, the exercise level. Uh, we talked about how, when, why mm -hmm. do we eat, okay? Most of the diets that people get into or the programs they get into focuses on what they eat. Mm -hmm. uh, don't eat these foods. Yes, exactly. Um, there are some organizations that talk about legal and illegal foods. <laughs> and, and, and there aren't that many foods out there that are really bad. It's what you do with them that, that's sure. a problem. Sure. So that. We have a wonderful woman who, who cooks on our show and is very, very small. And I said to her one day, how do you eat what you cook and stay that small? And she said, because of the portions that I eat. And, and sometimes I think even in America when we go into restaurants, you know, we get a plate, the thing looks like Mount Vesuvius. Mm -hmm. So our, our society encourages that in us too, does it not? Mm -hmm. And is that something you have to deal with in your patients then? Yes, a lot. Because often the fat person is stimulated to eat by external stimuli. Mm -hmm. And that they'll see food, or they'll be with people who are eating, or they'll smell food, and that'll make them want to eat. As opposed to being uh, motivated to eat by something internal, which is a physiological feeling of hunger. And as I was telling you earlier, that often fat people don't even know what real hunger is. Yes. They're eating because of those other feelings, and they never really get to feel hungry. And I was saying that they often practice what I call preventative hunger. <laughs> they'll take food with them in the car, they'll take food with them uh, on a short trip because they want to make sure they got it with them in case they get hungry. I suspect for some of them, cutting back would be what normal eating is for others. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we want people to know that they can participate in the workshop that you are doing uh, at the conference. It is April 3rd, 4th, and 5th. The number to call if you'd like to participate is 374 54 Three, three. And is your, your workshop is called Food for Thought? Food for Thought. Okay. Yes. Again. It's on Friday. Uh, do you know the time? It starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. Registration is earlier in the day. Okay. 374-5433. Three, three, three. Howard Cole, thank you very thank much you. for being with us. We will be back in just a moment to take a look at some of those quack medical devices. Stay with us. had a bad social life until I discovered Fresh and Light, the portable air freshener and night light that helps get rid of household odors caused by ugh, humans. Plugs into any double outlet to freshen air anywhere. Has two outlets of its own. Easily replaceable cartridges in popular fragrances too. <laughs> Take it from a social expert. Get Fresh and Light air freshener and night light at these stores. New Fresh and Light, available at Gimbal's and Elliott's Ace Hardware. Remember the last time you let the big one get away? Well, Target is giving you another chance during the big sale. You'll find the biggest savings we've offered in months, like this classic Bentwood-style rocker. It looks great in any home. Big sale priced at just $59.99. And you'll find lots of uses for this versatile enamel and canvas chair. Big sale priced at $29.99. Don't let the big one get away. The big sale at Target. It may seem unusual to find such beauty in a cemetery, but then Wisconsin Memorial Park is unusual. It's a sacred memorial park, rich with art and warm with care. At Wisconsin Memorial Park, 
you're aware of a constant concern for people's feelings and for their spiritual needs. And that's important, especially in time of need. Wisconsin Memorial Park, non-sectarian, not-for-profit. We're gonna go Hawaiian. Hawaiian Punch is the taste, the one and only taste. That really goes Hawaiian. Hawaiian Punch is more than just a cold drink. It's seven natural tropical fruits come together with 10% fruit juice for the taste everybody loves. Go Hawaiian, go Hawaiian. And now say aloha to delicious new tropical fruit. Aloha tropical fruit. A new flavor, Donnie, luscious new tropical fruit. Aloha tropical fruit. Right. There is an unusual collection of quack medical devices at Pewaukee Middle School. Our cameras are there this morning, and our guest is John Hisgin, who is the health instructor there. John, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Terry. How did you get interested in all of this? Well, when I was a young boy growing up in Racine, Wisconsin, um, our grandparents purchased a quack device, and I remember vividly my grandfather going through uh, a treatment when he had his cancer near the end of his life, and I honestly believe that maybe his life would have been prolonged had he gotten to medical treatment sooner. Why did you decide to make this a part of your health class? Well, I really wanted to try and find out if um, kids were as gullible as my grandparents seemed to be at that time in life. So what I tried to do is I sold them this particular medicine. And I sold them as a cure for dandruff and a cure for skin problems. And I had about 95% of my students ready to buy the product. And because of that, I realized there must have been a tremendous need for information about questionable medical practice. So uh, what I decided to do was to purchase some products, and some of these were given to us by members of the community. And uh, the first one that I want to uh, demonstrate or show to you is um, a device that makes use of electricity to cure just about every medical problem. Um, these are from three particular areas of the United States. This one was made in Racine, this one in Michigan, and this one in Connecticut. They were all competitors and all made lots of money in terms of uh, sales. Um, they made use of electrodes to treat medical problems. We have a few electrodes that we're going to talk a little bit about. Okay, um, this one was for the eyes and you put it on like this. And this one is for the tongue and you put it on like this. And you'd use this one on your throat like this. And you put, use this one for pimples and you put it on like that. So you can see it, it claimed just about to cure any medical problem that faced man at that particular time. Uh, this particular device was used by a medical doctor during the 1920s and it had a unique feature on it and uh, Mike is going to talk a little bit about that. This machine is used to cure um, problems in the lungs and, and you um, turn on ozone and take a deep breath in here. The average treatment time, Terry, was about 45 minutes for this, and they believed that ozone had a tremendous curative effect, and we know a little bit about ozone. We know <laughs> that there's a lot of negative feelings about any kind of curative problems with respect to this. We're going to turn on um, one of the machines for you right now and uh, show you how an average treatment would, take, would go on with this. Okay, this machine is supposed to cure any part of the body. Average treatment is about 45 minutes for this, and uh, you can see that that was the procedure that was used with uh, rubbing it over the area of the body that was afflicted. Okay, then the next one is for the hair. You can cure the harms of the hair. <laughs> okay, thank you. The next uh, medical uh, product that we want to take a look at is a product called the Spectrochrome. The Spectrochrome on uh, the right here was the one that my grandparents uh, purchased in 1941. The one you can see is made of wood as opposed to metal. The metal ones uh, were made up until the war started. They couldn't get any metal, so they used uh, this wood one that uh, appears on your right. Um, Jim is going to talk a little bit about the person who uh, made and sold this device. Yeah, Dinsha made this machine and came to America from India in 1919 and he bought his, bought his medical degree for $333.33 and this is his picture. Dinsha was very successful. He sold about uh, 3,000 of these at about $300 a piece. So uh, 
uh, 10,000 of these at $300 a piece, so he's very successful with it. We try to simulate what really goes on in uh, class by um, actually going through the procedure that uh, Dinshaw would go through. The treatments are usually taken at 10, 2, and 4 o'clock, and you have to be facing north when you take them. So there was a whole religious thing that Dinshaw had set up. Uh, Teresa's come in complaining of problems um, uh, with her arm, and so we're going to make believe like we're turning on the machine, and uh, we'll be going through the treatment right now. Okay. Normally the lights would go on in this particular device, and all it would be uh, would be to... Um, you know, turn, uh, turn the light on and it would, the treatment would last for about an hour to two hours. The next device that we want to take a look at uh, is kind of unique, I think, because it was made in Milwaukee. Many questionable medical uh, devices, um, Terry, were sometimes had very good medical base to them. The use of heat as a form of treatment uh, it was very, very Im important today. Yet the claims of this particular product to cure almost everything um, was the, the key feature in this particular product. Mike has come complaining of um, feet problems because of basketball. He would be standing on this particular device now for about 45 minutes to an hour, according to Miller, who, who developed this, Miller Electronics in Milwaukee. Um, Ann is going to demonstrate one of the other types of treatments for this. This one would <coughs> cure neck problems. You wrap the padding around the neck and wind this around the neck once or twice and turn it on. <laughs> Looks like a cure to me. <laughs> That would be for dealing with any kind of neck pain, neck problems. So this machine did, in fact, um, claim to cure just about everything. Now, one of the reasons that you have done this, John, is to share this information with your students. What about some of today's more avant-garde or unusual medical treatments? Uh, things like acupuncture, maybe p some people would consider chiropractic to fall on those lines. Do you discuss that as well? Sure. We spend a lot of time talking about alternative medical uh, techniques. We have chiropractors that uh, come in and talk to us about some of their um, uh, treatment uh, ideologies. And we also spend some time talking about acupuncture. Uh, acupuncture is a, a, a treatment that um, has had a lot of uses. Um, maybe Dan can mention a couple that they're being used for. Well, um, acupuncture is used sometimes to cure smoking and pain, sometimes tension. So it's generally used as a treatment device and become very popular today. John, thank you very much for being with us this morning. It's a great display, and you and the students have done a terrific job. We appreciate your help this morning. That's a collection of quack medical devices being studied by uh, some of the students at Pewaukee Middle School, and we talked with their health instructor, John Hiskin, this morning. We want to mention again, if you're interested in advice on weddings, call Franny. Her number is 224-1867. Now, she may not be there, but there will be someone at the number who can help you. And if you'd like to know more, about the AHP conference that Howard Cole is a part of. You can call 374-5433. Tomorrow on the show, we're going to talk about dreams, how you can interpret them, what they mean to you, and we'll have some personal money management for you from T. Al Nolan, and Sue Korluski will be here with the Bargain of the Week as well. Have a great day. We'll see you then, tomorrow at 9 o'clock here on Channel 4. <laughs>
Cool Whip? Yup. And you've got something fresh. A delicious pie you make in eight minutes. Just dissolve and thicken Jell-O brand gelatin. Blend in Cool Whip non-dairy whip topping and sliced fresh fruit. Spoon into a ready-made grain.